Welcome to the Gift Up Podcast. Make sure to hit that like button, share the videos, and subscribe. I'm looking forward to bringing you guys all the best bets when this season starts. I just can't wait because there's going to be six, seven different videos where we just dissect all this shit. Remember, that's the first time I swore. Seven days. but whatever. It's not for kids anyways. Kids shouldn't gamble. Remember that. Uh, with that being said, uh, Trent Brown sees special times ahead for the Raiders. Well, I agree with him to a certain extent. I think that there are some positives here. There are a lot of things that concern me as well. But let me get into what I think is the positive aspect of this and what I think could be a dominant top five attack. And that's the run game. And we'll go down the name list here, and I think they really don't need any introduction, but I'm going to say it. Colton Miller at tackle. He's been a stud ever since he came out. One of our top tackles coming out. Richie Incognito, left guard, is an animal, a beast. I saw him firsthand in Buffalo while I was sitting in the stadium watching him maul people. He brought that aspect to this team. Rodney Hudson at center, easily a top four center in the league. Gabe Jackson, been getting it done for a long time now. Really physical. And then Trent Brown, to cap that off at right tackle. And this is a mammoth O-line. This is one of the biggest O-line in the league. When you look at them, when you're on the field with them, or if you're sitting on the sideline and you see them, they're mammoth. So I understand what Trent Brown is saying from a run aspect. As a unit, they're extremely physical. Josh Jacobs is, in my opinion, going to be one of the best runners this year. And he showed a lot of of that last year. But now he's going to be healthy. He's going to be ready to go. That's even dipping into fantasy football. Uh, I would recommend you draft him as your top three running back this year. He's going to be all over the place. Lynn Bowden Jr., I'm extremely excited about too. Not as just a running back, but as a gadget guy. Wanted to throw that in. I think he's going to be dynamic for the Raiders. I think even more so than Taysom Hill is for the Saints. I think Lynn Bowden has that capability. With that being said, the tight end group is laid in stone. Darren Waller, easily top seven receiving tight end in the league. What he did last year was pretty impressive without much help. So I think he's just going to build on that this year. And then uh, Jason Witten, I think his experience will help. I think mainly in blocking. He's a big body. So I think blocking-wise, he'll help. And then Darren Waller can go out there and catch the football and be like a number two or three receiver for the squad. And they're going to need that from Waller because that's one part I can't sugarcoat. I really don't like the receiving core for the Raiders. I just simply don't. I didn't like the Henry Ruggs pick. I think that was just a wasted pick. And you know what? You can slaughter me in the comment section for that. I really don't give a crap uh, because it's a wasted pick. And I don't really need to go beyond that because I watched the game film. Wasn't impressed. So say what you will. Tyrell Williams goes ghost. Even went ghost when he was with the Chargers. So say what you will in the comment section because he ain't good. Zay Jones, complete failure with Buffalo. When they brought in Cole Beasley and John Brown. Oh my God, all of a sudden, players started catching footballs. Zay Jones, lost cause. Brian Edwards in the third round, didn't understand that at all. At all. And there was a lot better options that they could have went with. And a lot, there was even tight ends that they could have went with that were better than Brian Edwards in the third round. Wasted pick by Mayock. Big complaint of mine. Big complaint. That being said, those are my complaints with the offense. Uh, Defense, I actually think that it could be better than people think. Cleveland Farrell, not a big fan. Sorry, Mayock missed again. But 
he hit on Max Crosby. He hit on Max Crosby, and I think Max Crosby could definitely be a dominant player for them this coming year. You put in Collins next to him, P.J. Hall, Hankins, Nassib, Hurst. They can be role players next to Cosby, and they can make some stuff happen, but by no means do the Raiders have another pass-rushing option. They just simply don't. I want to go on record at saying that right now. Looking at the linebacking core, I will say that, unfortunately, it's pretty weak, but I love the addition of Corey Littleton. I wish that more teams would have looked at Littleton because his coverage ability is actually extremely good. His coverage in space is exceptional. I like that for Mayock. I do. So Littleton's going to have to lead that linebacking core with the rotational players they have on the D-line. Hopefully Max Crosby can have a dominant year. Moving on to the secondary. Unfortunately, I have more bad news. Don't Because I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Not going to sugarcoat it for views. Damon Arnett was not crazy about that pick. Not crazy about that pick at all. They could have went in a lot of different directions. And look, right now, I'm not going to look up all the draft picks that happened. I'm not going to go and throw names in everybody's faces. I just felt like it was an overreach. And I think everybody knows that they know what I'm talking about. So I'm not going to... I, I'm not going to name 20 names that I would have taken over Damon Arnett in the first round, but there's a lot, even receivers, that I would have taken over Damon Arnett. Prince of Mukamara, that's just a stopgap. That's like bubble gum and duct tape. You want to go that route to, to build on what you did this year and build to next year, fine. But I think it's a little bit short-sighted by Mayock. Prince of Mukamara is one of those corners that it's like a it's like flipping a coin. It's like betting a football game. You see him cover great one time and then he gets burned the next. Can't count on him. Jonathan Abram at safety, I hope he stays healthy. Because he will be around the football. He will make plays. So Health-wise, he would be a huge asset to this team, morale-wise and physicality-wise. I hope he's healthy. LaMarcus Joyner, I like that addition. I think that he'll be serviceable. Obviously, he can't go against the number one corner or number one receiver of a team, but he is serviceable. You can match him with certain guys um, depending on the speed and size. I think he's a serviceable corner, but not a starter. So I will go on record now and say that I think the Chargers have one of the weaker secondaries in the league. That's got to be said. Because I'm not bought into this defense yet. They might have an okay pass rush with Crosby. Littleton can, can cover in space. But the secondary is held together with bubblegum and duct tape. Beyond Littleton in the linebacking core... It's pretty weak. In the front four, it's pretty weak as well. So I, I think there's some issues. I, I want to throw in Arden Key because I really feel like if he's given a chance and he's healthy, he can rack up the sacks with Crosby. But just not good enough of a defense here. And with that, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe.